little bit differently, but which have a huge amount of common ground. And I think when we start to delve into the nutrition situation in both cities, I think we've been surprised at how much, how many common issues there are. Um, and I think some of the big themes that come out is that whether you're, if you're rich or you're poor in Birmingham or Pune, your experiences of food are very different from your rich or poor counterparts. So there's big pronounced dietary inequalities, whether you're in Pune or whether you're in Birmingham. It might be surprising to those of you who are from Pune to learn that we have quite severe um, levels of food insecurity or food poverty in the UK, um, and we have big differences in obesity levels between rich and poor. The burden is highest amongst those who are poorest. So um, we have very pronounced dietary inequality. We have, um, we have across both cities challenges around dietary quality. They, as, as Shireen said, they often affect rich and poor, but we have problems around getting a really nutritious diet across the wealth groups. And our food system isn't working hard enough to, to help get us there. Um, and then I think we, in both cities, have acknowledged the really critical role of the early years of life. Um, uh, Madam Sheetal mentioned that particularly around breastfeeding and complementary feeding and getting that period right. And the, the two cities experience that challenge a little bit differently. Um, but nevertheless, it's potentially an area of focus for, for the partnership. So we have a huge opportunity. And we also have different ways of working across the city. So I think it's probably fair to say in the UK generally, um, we've left food and nutrition to the market primarily. And um, we've, we've now, we're now reaping the consequences of some of those decisions. We do have, however, in Birmingham uniquely, a really exciting alliance between businesses and the local authority and the universities in the Smart City Alliance, which is generating new ways of working and ideas and innovation, which I think we can potentially build on. Whereas, of course, here in, in Pune, you have a raft of publicly funded programs which are playing a really critical role in trying to prevent undernutrition, particularly in the early years, and a very strong public policy framework within which this work can be placed. So I think there's potentially exciting learning across the two cities about those ways of working. Um, and then as, as uh, I think um, both Shireen and um, Madame Sheetal mentioned, um, if you could move on the next slide, there's both cities have got a very committed, smart agenda. But the food and nutrition creates an opportunity to really humanize that and make sure that those goals are embedded in some human development outcomes. And we can really leverage all the exciting work which both cities are doing, which are driven by technology, and low carbon footprint, um, the brilliant work that's going on around plastics here, and think about how that can be leveraged to deliver better nutrition outcomes and tackling all forms of malnutrition. Next slide, please. We have produced three documents that help inform this partnership, and we'll be circulating those, I think, after, after this meeting. We've done a situation analysis in Pune and in Birmingham, trying to draw out where those similarities and differences are. We've also pulled together a series of case studies from around the world which can help inspire this partnership. So where cities in other parts of the world have thought about connecting the SMART agenda with the nutrition outcomes. There's not very much going on out there, but we've tried to pull together what there is to help to sort of fertilize the conversation that happens between the two cities. Um, and we've, we've got a working definition here of what we mean by a nutrition SMART city. So we think that data and technology is really crucial to um, making the connection to the SMART agenda. It's about the way that food is produced, processed, distributed, and consumed. We're interested in the whole food system, working right the way across from production to consumption. And we're concerned with quality and equitable access. We want to find ways that disrupt some of the prevailing food systems that are not delivering the outcomes that we really need. And to do that, we need to have a multi-stakeholder conversation, bringing together businesses, local authorities, nutritionists, public health experts, agricultural experts. And that's the beginning of the conversation here today. Um, so this is a very exciting um, agenda. I, I, I think um, already the presenters have laid out some of the themes which have emerged from Birmingham. And I think we're hoping to add to that list of themes through the conversation today. Um, so I think um, I, from my side, I would certainly encourage 
you know, new ideas to be brought into the conversation as today's event um, progresses. And also be really exciting to hear from you about how we might start that conversation with citizens in the city here in Pune, but we also need to start thinking about that for Birmingham. So um, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for the opportunity and um, look forward to the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for sharing your experiences on nutrition 